Hey guys, Henry here, and welcome to a short video essay on how to use shaky cam right. The majority of filmgoers, as well as filmmakers in general, have a very firm opinion when it comes to shaky cam, and the opinion it is a plague. That shaky cam is a technique used exclusively by filmmakers who do not know what they are doing, and that if a scene uses shaky cam and you remove it, that scene without exception becomes better by default. In this video essay, I want to explain why that mindset is wrong. Now, firstly, it is true that Shaky Cam has been utilised by a great many directors to a very poor standard. Take this example, for instance. <laughs> As you can see, that example of shaky cam is exceptionally poor. It is nearly impossible to decipher what's going on or even who is winning the fight. Now there are a thousand and one examples of poorly done shaky cam, but in this quick essay I want to address just one example where it is used and it works, and that example is in the film 28 weeks later. Let's watch that again. So as the protagonist is running down the hallway, the camera is stable as it smoothly tracks his movements. And then a few seconds later, as a zombie charges down the very same hallway, the camera is shaking and sporadic in a total contrast to the prior shot. And this contrast between steady and shaky cam is used throughout this entire scene. We get a steady shot of the protagonist and his wife not moving, it is immediately followed by a quick shot of a zombie where the camera is shaking and he snaps his head around. We get a steady shot of the protagonist running in a field, it is immediately followed by a shaking shot from behind a zombie. I think part of the reason why this scene is nowhere near as nauseating as other examples of shaky cam is because the technique is used sparingly. Most of the shots are not shaking at all and are quite easy to decipher, but that reason right there doesn't quite explain why this is a particularly effective use of the technique, but rather why it isn't a bad one. So to explain why this is a great example of how to use shaky cam, we need to first understand the effect of the technique. Every cinematic technique has an effect. The long shot helps to establish a strong sense of place. A moving camera that doesn't ever stay still helps to create a sense of momentum, but also instability, as we can never quite find a stable footing. I'd like to argue that the number one effect Shaky Cam has on an audience, aside from the nausea, is essentially a more condensed effect of the moving shot. It creates a sense of instability. So bringing this back to 28 weeks later, we can see why this use of shaky cam is just so provocative. In contrast to the steady shots, the shaking shots where the infected are the subjects gives them a strong sense of instability and helps to reinforce their feral nature. So what can you take away from this video essay? Well, shaky cam is just like any other cinematic technique. It has its place in film and when used correctly, it can be quite provocative. The real reason the technique has developed such a poor reputation is because the vast majority of people who use it do not understand its effect. And as a result, we see it constantly used in scenes where it is detrimental to the overall experience rather than adding to it. So if you have a friend who thinks that shaky cam is a plague that without exception needs to be eradicated from all future films, feel free to show them this video. Please do like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time on The Closer Look.